wonderful people make on hear this news don't worsen nam the kano's problems obi dibo obi dibo to Igbo politicians i'm waiting this our elder statesman talk all trunk a roads in enugu would be paved according to governor peter mba UK election victory validates Peter B as a leader of Black Race, Labour Party chieftain. Your response shows how jobless, useless you are. Mumfa is back at EFCC chairman. Well, my wonderful Biafran brothers and sisters, Ndonyama Nadema, na this one, on the information, or what you expect in this very broadcast, I don't hear a move. Edda statement don't come out too because. Uh, in as much as uh, some people are clapping for their so-called governors or or the so-called um, um, what they call it uh, lawmakers that they are championing for the mass and the release in as much as people are clapping for them but to me i didn't see anything to clap there because uh, exactly where my stand is that's my assertion that these people will end up compounding the problems of martin lam the canon why everybody running like that skater after three good years what is the secret behind it that is what the secret behind it because most of them now will be rushing simply because they want to uh, they want the, the, them to be known or be written in the book of uh, uh, life in the Biafran history that uh, they are the one that freed the Martin Lam the Canon when they, the court refused to do so. Uh, as such, trying to compound the issues or some people will also uh, politicize it. Anyway, that by the way. But uh, we are not going to waste much of your time. We are going to go straight to the reason why we are here this morning. We don't want to talk too much. Oh, please like, share, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos coming your way. Please do not forget the trending hashtag Biafran Mass Exodus 2024. Any of my videos you saw, whether the one I posted, the one another person posted, please continue commenting using the hashtag Biafran Mass Exodus 2024. Hashtag Biafran Mass Exodus 2024. And so it's supposed to be. Let us go there. Elder statesman Dr. Chika Obidibo has urged politicians, especially those from the southeast, against compounding the travails of the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipob Namde Kano. Obidibo expressed the regret that some Igbo polit political elites are among, uh, sorry, are going about the ongoing popular demand for the release of the embattled leader. Of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOB, the wrong way. Stressing that the overzealous politicians are acting out of ignorance and mostly in self aggrandizement. In a statement made available to journalists, which happened in Enugu on Sunday, which is yesterday, Obi Dibo, who is the president of Osisioma Foundation, noted that the delicate nature of a Kano's incarceration requires quiet diplomacy to achieve a political solution without politicizing the young man's release, the way they are going about it. While identifying the silent complications around the IPOB leader's forceful rendition and consequent incarceration, the Anambra-born elder statesman said, Britain's loud silence about Kano's predicament raises a, a large red flag. Raises a large red flag. Please underline that word. Britain's loud silence about Mazin Dam the Kano predicament raises a large red flag. That means they have hand in the rendition of Mazin Dam the Kano, according to the assertion of our elder statesman. Part of the statement reads I woke up this morning with a very heavy heart. I am concerned to say that I am not comfortable with the way and manner our political elites are going about their request for the release of Mazin Nam the Kano. The sense I make uh, of the cheapest scramble, scramble by Igbo politicians to be identified in the growing cause for the Mazen Namdekano's freedom from prolonged and unjust incarceration is that they are merely playing to the gallery of politics or politicians. It's obvious that Bola Metunumbu is not entirely the one holding Namdekano. It was not even former president Mamad Buare nor his S1 Attorney General of the Federation, AGF Abubakar Malami SAN. All the AGFs, including the current one, are mere legal officers for the government. Then, please, uh, that statement, can you tell us who is holding Mazen Namdekano? Is it the Britain or 
our Southeast uh, political elites. However, Ghana's matter is a security issue, which requires the involvement of the National Security Advisor. No Horebado, the president may not have absolute power to release Kano, although he has the power to influence things if he is so, he is so wishes. Obidibo further disclosed that the other powerful elephant in the room blocking Nam the Kano's freedom is the British government. Hey, hey. Certain that Kano acted against British economic interests in Nigeria. He remarked that he said this economic interest, which Kano's agitation uh, was negatively affecting, had been enriching the government and the people of Britain over several centuries. Saying that although the fact is well known, every Nigerian elite, most are simply pretentious. Everything that Kano said or did was done in Britain, being a British citizen, but they could not afford to arrest him on British soil because of obvious and potential backlash of the matter. Now we are making a headway. What Britain did was to join in the international conspiracy to lure Kano to Kenya, knowing that Africans lack integrity and respect for laws. They then got him kidnapped in Kenya and forcibly and illegally renditioned him to Nigeria. They could not have done that in any part of the world outside of Africa without extreme repercussions and consequences. Such can only happen in Africa, and they knew that much. The British High Commissioner in Nigeria showed no interest in at least speaking up against the violent kidnap and the rendition of her citizen. All the embassy was interested is in was to hear Kano renounce his dream of a Biafra, probably with a promise never to support any such agitation in the future. He said, The industrialist said Britain's double standards and hypocrisy betray, uh, betray that long-term destabilizing designs against Nigeria's social, economic uh, prosperity and independence. According to Obidibo, here was the same Britain that was protected in 1984 with the forceful abduction and return to Nigeria of Alaji Omar Diko, who was not even a British citizen at that time, but merely an asylum seeker in Britain. Britain continues to see Nigeria as their own fertile farmland for free economic exploitation and political manipulation. They have no wish to relax their stronghold, not now, not in the near future. But then, African youths are gradually coming up to challenge all the existing frustrations, deprive, uh, deprivations, and blatant exclusive from the enjoying the natural endowment uh, of their own countries. He said, he noted that uh, what the British may not uh, reckon with, uh, with easily is that the Biafra agitation has since gone beyond Namdekano because other elements have killed into the struggle, thereby fueling the agitation way beyond even Kano's expectations. Ubidibo claimed that restraining Kano as it is, erroneously believed in his captors, had little chance of disrupting the movement he founded. <laughs> it seems that uh, all that is hindering the actualization of the dream of Biafra is the lack of involvement of the elites, excluding imposed leaders and greedy political elites in the struggle. You get the point now? Now the elites is the one that is holding their friends down, but they can never hold us down anymore. The new effort to free Mazin Nam the Kano should be directed at the NSA, Nigeria Security Advisor, as well as the ambassadors of Britain, USA, and ambassadors of some well-meaning and influential countries like China, Russia, ETC. Without the buy-in of those powerful nations, the struggle will surely continue until Biafra gets the referendum that IPOP has been demanding. However, they get it. If Kano is released on political grounds without holding a referendum as IPOP demands, the struggle will most likely will most likely continue, thereby rendering elusive or delaying further the much sought after peace. <laughs> Ove ve kuve, if na I shall make on a con here this one. Ooh. <laughs> I tell you the simple truth, my dear, that in fact, it seems like I have seen this in earlier. 
And I shouted it to one of my videos when this thing happened. The rate in which uh, you, uh, UK take uh, day silent, be like say, now them be the masterminder of the Martin Nam Dekano kid now. Now, an other statement have come out to confirm my assertions. Anyway, we are going to illustrate that uh, that news when the time comes. All trunk uh, roads in uh, Enugu will be paved. Governor Peter Mba of Enugu State. Enugu State Governor Peter Mba has said in his administration will ensure all trunk A roads in the city and rural areas are paved. Peter Mba said this on Saturday night while speaking to newsmen after receiving the distinguished award for infrastructure presented to him by Vice President Kashim Shetima at the Nigerian Excellence Award in Public Service. Names from the office of the secretary to the government of the federation. Governor Mba said the award on infrastructure was a call on his administration to do more, stating that a success abhors complacencies. We are humbled by the fact that our modest efforts to revamp our roads and other infrastructure are genuine recognition. However, success abhors complacencies, so this award is going to spur us to do even more. We are going to hit the road to ensure that all the trunk A roads in the city, in our cities and rural areas are paved. As you are probably aware, beside the initial 71 urban roads, the ongoing major inter-local government roads, some of which will equally serve as gateways to our neighboring regions, we are commencing work on 80 other roads. In addition, our target is to construct at least 10, kilo, uh, 10, uh, 10 kilometers of roads in every of our 260 electoral wards, he said. The governor of Enugu State further thanked the Fulani government for support and cooperation. We are ever grateful to India Enugu and the Fulani government for their uh, ceaseless support and cooperation. We appreciate them for recognizing our efforts and turning around the fortunes of our beloved state, he added. Moving forward, UK election victory validates Peter Obi as leader of Black Race, Labour Party chieftain. The Labour Party candidate for Abakiliki and Izi, federal constituency in the 2020 general elections, Eze Emmanuel Eze, has held the party's presidential candidate Peter Obi as the leader of the Black Race following the Labour Party's recent victory in the United Kingdom. As they noted that Obi had called on the UK electorate to vote for the Labour Party, which resulted in a landslide victory for the party in the UK. For your small mind. Okute News report that as they made a statement during the Labour Party's expanded uh, st uh, statewide stakeholders uh, briefing at City Hall Event Centre in Abakaleke over the weekend. According to Eze, Obi's influence extend beyond Nigeria, reaching the entire African continent and the world. I am proud to have a leader in the UK election. We had what happened. P2B made a statement and told the people to vote for the Labour Party and the entire election went in one direction. We have a man who I can describe as a leader of the black race, not just Nigeria, Eze declared. Eze further described Obi as a leader of the Labour Party in Nigeria, capable of guiding the country to a prosperous future. Commending a party members in Ebony State, Eze expressed the stakeholders' commitment to resolving the party's leadership issues at the national level. He emphasized that the Ebony State chapter of the party is united and will continue to work together to ensure the birth of a new Nigeria by 2027. The last but not the least, your response shows how jobless, useless you are. Monfa hit back at EFCC chairman. The only governors on propagandas, and that is example the, the, the point. They have no reason, they have nothing to offer. Rather than prognosing online to check who says A or who says B for them to respond as quickly as possible. Populist uh, socialite uh, Ismaila Mustafa, also known as Monfa, has responded after the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, asked him to prove his allegations that they are the most corrupt agency. Okute News reported that his response comes in the wake of the EFCC's claims that a, a colossal sum of 35 billion naira was discovered in his bank accounts. Monfa, 
facing a money laundering uh, case brought by ESCC in a post via Instagram wrote, the most uh, useless and corrupt Nigerian government agency at official EFCC. However, the EFCC in the statement by the head of media and publicity, Dele Oyewale, challenged Monfa to show proof that they are corrupt. In a post to via his Instagram page, Monfa said the fact that the anti-graft agency responded to him shows how it is useless and jobless. He wrote, my attention has once again been drawn to the social media tantrum of the ESCC demanding that I prove corruption allegations against them. The fact that the commission, particularly their chairman, could stoop so low to respond to my post shows clearly how useless jobless the ESCC and how they waste taxpayers' money on engaging banters on social media. Now I won't bother to dwell on the trumped up charges that was cooked up against me for personal gains by some of their corrupt officials and mere media trial because the fact speaks for itself, but we rather dwell on how useless this commission under the leadership of the chairman cause uh, why with the EFCC on Friday, 5th of July, 2024, step outside of their constitutional duty and later armed men on the streets of Lagos and Abuja on all the name of preventing citizens from protesting against corruption being displayed by the EFCC, thereby infringing on their fundamental right to lawful protest and preventing innocent citizens from going about their lawful businesses. Another example is beating up an innocent citizens during their illegal and night raids. We all saw what happened in Ondo State and recently in Lagos with the commission reluctantly admitted on its social media platforms. Now, back to my case. The ESCC claim they have overwhelming evidence of my involvement in money laundering. However, the question is, who is this faceless person I laundered money for? Does the person not have a name? Why did you mention the name of the person in the Trump of charges before the court? Your commission is clearly the one drawing up the clutching to any straw. When they quickly rose to the media to post one side of the evidence of your witness in court, when he was here to be cross-examined just to gain social media trend with my name, whereas all he said in court were lies with no evidential proof, which would all come to light on the next court date. To confirm how useless they were again, they will reply me again and I will be waiting with more proofs at official EFCC. <laughs> this one, this one, this one pass me. Anyway, my wonderful people, now hear me, they take my break. You, but I go have my voice again when I come back. I beg, like, share, comment, and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos coming your way. My name is Sidi Men. I'm Andy Anes, reporting from the platform of Ogute Daily Talk.